Hello, this is Christian. So I want to spend some time in this video to uh, answer one of the questions that was asked during class last night. And the question was how you can, how do you build this matrix or build a table using code as opposed to just um, literally create this matrix by hand, okay? Um, uh, I, I think that was a question. So I want to do that. And also I'm going to expand a little bit more on the uh, solutions that we did last night by calculating the diagonals of this matrix to see if they're equal or not equal. Okay, and the solution that was pro um, uh, proposed by Brent last night is, is pretty awesome by reversing the matrix and then you do the same loop to iterate, uh, get those uh, columns. So that's awesome. There are many, many ways. But I'm gonna show you, uh, you know, um, how to get the diagonals uh, without using the reversal of the matrix as well, okay? And also some of the shortcuts to build to get those columns. So first let's build this matrix. And so the first thing you would think about is a matrix is usually, um, well, I guess it's square matrix, right? It usually, usually it's squared. Uh, if it's not square, then I guess we just call those uh, a table or two-dimensional uh, tables and so on. But let's say we are dealing with only square matrix. So the rows and columns is always the same. So I say it's a four by four, three by three, 12 by 12 and whatever. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable here called a matrix. So let's go up here and we create a matrix variable. We, change that to create that as a default matrix of zero size. And again, the matrix is basically just a, um, you know, matrix of a two dimensional of a list of lists, basically one, two, three. So it's a three by three, and then, you know, a four by four, five by five and so on. Okay, so this should always be equal. So we leave that blank first. That's the outer uh, matrix is. And then, um, so instead of having, uh, you know, again, we don't like magic numbers. so. What is the matrix size? Put here the matrix size. We start with equal to four. So somehow we have to put four somewhere, right? <laughs> um, so that'll be the matrix size. So four by four, five by five. And later on, uh, if you want to change the size, you just change in one place and everything else just works beautifully, right? Okay. So the numbers, as you can see in this example, is sequentially from one to 16. So one to, you know, one to 25, one to 32, I mean, 36 and so forth. So it's a square matrix. And you, know, you can leave it as is, or you can store a value. So you can put something like this, go up here, matrix value or, um, yeah, matrix, uh, no, let's call it uh, max value is equal to the square of the matrix size, right? Four by four, five by five, and so forth. So I'm gonna do a matrix size, uh, star star two, right? So the star star here is the squared operator. If it's a single star, it's a multiplication, so make sure you um, have it correctly, right? So again, four star stars two is a square of four, okay? So it's gonna be 16 in this case. So you can do that. Um, you, you use that uh, for, you know, um, some some values if you wanna do some randomization later on maybe. I just put it here for just in case I might need it. So in this case, you know, you can do one where you can loop a range from one up to the matrix size, right? So you, you one, two, three, four, five, and then you have to break off at the column size of four. So at the matrix size, when you reach that number, you break it off and you loop, continue the loop from five, six, and eight, and so forth like that. Okay, that's one approach. Another simpler approach is basically you start from one. So let's say I'm gonna start from element equal to one. That's my initial number, okay? Um, and they're going to loop, loop here. So for uh, every row, we start from row zero, for the range of the, um, you know, uh, doesn't matter, right? For up to the max size, matrix size. Okay, so it's basically row zero, one, two, three, and we're done. We start in that row. And then now we're going to create a temporary list to store the first row data. So we can add it to the matrix. Okay, so eventually it'll be like, let's say one, two, three, four. And then we'd stop. We add another one, you know, five, six, seven, eight, and so forth. That is when we do. It's gonna build this temporary list and then I add it to the matrix and so forth, okay? So you create a temp list, leave that blank. And then you can do something like four, um, it's just four columns, so same thing. You do like a, um, an I or column, doesn't matter, um, four column in the range of the matrix size. Again, same thing, it's a square matrix. And then basically you're gonna add to the temp the element. Right? If it's a one, and then after that, make sure you increase element by one 
you get a two and three and so forth. So once you do that four times, then you get one, two, three, four, you're done. Once you're done, you're out of the inner loop and then you're going to add that to the matrix. You're gonna append it to the matrix. Sorry, it's kind of noisy if you can hear it. It's uh, almost a vacuum in the uh, room outside. Uh, we're gonna add the temp to that list. Okay, so we do that four times. And then when we're done, we're gonna get a matrix of looks like this. So let's get, let's see what happens. Let's run this. And here we go. Everything looks good. Run, open the matrix. So here is the matrix for 24, exactly how you do here. Okay, if you want to have something like a, um, a, a non-square matrix, then all you have to do is basically change this column or this you know size here. But if you do that, just make sure the numbers are still the same. Uh, I, I guess it doesn't really matter. But let's, let's say if I do a, you know, it's a, a four, matrix is four, so let's say four by six, okay? So you get a four by six, and here we have a four by six, right? So one of the six, all the way to 24, and, and so on, okay? But one is square, so you can see I put that square here. So that's how you can actually do that. Now, numbers are sequentially. If you want to use random numbers, then you can import a random function from the random class, import random. From that random, it, there is a function called randint that you can use. So let's, let's go down here and let me turn this off. We will do something like this. Random.randint, okay, has an integer. It is integers only. It has a starting and ending position. So these two are integers also, and they will be inclusive, I believe. So I want to start from one up to the size of this matrix uh, value. Okay, so from one to 16, if you change that to uh, something else, you will be up to that number. So I do that, and then down here, we want to add the matrix. I will also copy this and do it again. Actually, you know, you don't do this here. You can just do one time down here, actually. I do have to do that. So in other words, you can just, you know, put that down here. Okay, right here. And then I don't have to do that part down here. So I randomize that. Um, uh, no, no, not here, sorry. It has to be has to be in here, okay? You randomize the number, and then you add it to the list. You loop that four times, okay? And so if it's correct, if you run this, you're gonna get a set of random numbers. And I did not check for duplicates, so you can see 11, 11 duplicates here. You can also do that, make sure it is not duplicate. And um, there are, again, a couple ways to do that. You can do it manually, or you can add it to a, um, uh, add it to a, uh, what we call a set. We're gonna learn that later, that a set is always unique and you have, you have to make sure the set size is equal to four until you stop, right? So uh, lots of ways. But anyway, so that's how you can randomize, um, randomize your numbers. So let's go back to uh, the original um, one. And we, because for sure we know that the numbers actually do work, right? So we want to test something that's actually working first before we do something else. So we've got our matrix. I'm going to run this again one more time. And I'll leave it here so we can kind of iterate through this. Okay, so we're going to get the diagonal from the left to the right. And then we'll do from our left and right to the left and so forth. So I'll do the one we did in the class. And then we'll do a, a couple. Um, uh, a different ways to do that as well. So the first thing is, I'm going to hit two diagonal uh, one and diagonal two equal to two uh, separate lists. Okay, so make sure you do that um, separate list. Don't set diagonal one equal diagonal two because remember it's reference type. Okay, so what do we do here? I'll do the one in the class we did first. <clears throat> so we do a four uh, instead of i j, I call it row. Okay, and the range of the matrix size. It's a four by four. <clears throat> so row zero, right? How do I get the diagonal? When the ith row is equal to the jth column, right? So row zero, j zero, row one, j one, and so forth, right? That's what we did in class. So here you do a four column and the range of the matrix size again, it's a square matrix. And then we say when they're both equal, so if the row is equal to the column, then we found the diagonal number. And we're gonna add that to the diagonal one list. We, what are we adding? We're adding the data inside the matrix at the row and j uh, column, okay? 
Once you found that, then we don't need to do any further operations. We break out of that inner loop and then we're done. It goes to the next column or next row and so forth. So if it's correct, we run this, our diagonal should be 1, 6, 11, 16. Okay, so 1, 6, 11, 16, that's this diagonal here. Okay, so let's do the other one. Let's do the diagonal two. Now diagonal two, you know, um, if you think about it, so how do you get there without reversing, okay? So you look at row one, row zero, the index zero. I wish they also show index up here as well for the column, but it'll be zero, zero, right? Zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. So I get, when I do a zero, three, I get this number. The next one, one, zero, plus zero is one. One plus one is two. The column column one is two. One plus a column two is a three. Okay, so I get this number seven. That's what I want. So it's a three. Row two plus column zero is a nine. I don't want that. Row two plus column one is a three. It's a 10. So I get that. So you can see that when I add the I in the J column, if I get to a number of three, I get exactly what I want, this diagonal. So for matrices, the diagonal from this direction is always going to be the size of your matrix, right? Minus one. You get this diagonal. We add the J in the I or the row, the column together, and they're equal to the maximum index of your uh, matrix that you always get this middle number here, this diagonal. Okay. So um, so that's what we're going to do with here. It's exactly the same as this. I'm going to copy this. It's just one minor change. Okay, so this time for every row, every column, we're going to add the row and the column together. And if they are equal to the maximum interest, uh, the size of the matrix, matrix size, minus one. Okay, in this case, is three. If zero plus three is three, so you get four. 1 plus 2, you get a 3, so it's 7, right? 2 plus 1, 3 is 10. Okay, well, not, right? So you do that, and then you add it to your diagonal 2. And then, you know, it's the same. Add row 0, add row zero column 0, I mean, column 3, and so forth. So the change is only basically this line from here to here, okay? So that is our diagonal 2. So if it's correct, we're going to get 4, 7, 10, 13. Okay, so we get 4, 7, 10, 13. Cool, huh? Again, just a little bit of thinking in math, um, a little bit just, you know, draw it out, sketch it out, you do some calculation in your head and paper until you get it correct, okay? It's, uh, it's unless you really, I'm, I'm not saying that you're not, but some people are really bright and they can actually think this in their head and just do it right away. So you can see that's how you do it. Now I'm gonna show you another way how to do this using a much shorter code, okay? It's, it's not a trick, it just, if you think through it, it makes sense. So the first one, you see that when row equal to column, right? When they when they're equal, so that means if I row is zero, column is zero. Row one, column one. So if that's the case, then I don't really care about this column here, right? So let me do this. Let me turn this off. Okay. So we do a four row. Um, and range matrix size. I call it row, but you can call it just a variable. Maybe it doesn't make sense. So I'm just saying that I'm going to go ahead and add this. I don't care about checking whether they're equal or not. I just add it right away. But instead of column, it would be the row of the row, right? So row 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. I do that four times or matrix size times, I'm done. Two lines as opposed to six lines, five lines, right? So that's that. And then same thing down here. Let me turn this off. Just a little math. Okay, we can check first. You can see it's still one, six, 11, 16, okay? Now the other way is kind of the same thing. I'm gonna copy this. So what's the difference? If you look again, if you go this diagonal, right, it's basically the size of the index minus i. So it's index of three, maximum index of three, minus i, you get it four. 
three minus one, you get index of two. Three minus two, index of one, index zero, right? So all you have to do here is basically you can create the, the, uh, the column is equal to the matrix size minus the row minus one, okay? That one off is the index position because it's we counting zero. So that's the case that would be from row to column, okay? And I did three lines, but you can basically move this inside here. You get two lines just like above. I do this so you can see easier. So now if it's correct, you're going to get 4, 7, 10, 13, just like the other one. Uh, I did not put two here. So let's see. Okay, so you see that now we have 4, 7, 10, and 13. So again, if you don't like this, you put that in, if you make it short, you put that inside here like that. You delete this, and then here you go. Right. Okay. So, folks, that's how um, you can actually uh, do this. Again, there are other ways as well. Okay. This is not the only way. It may not be the most efficient way, but there are other ways as well. Um, again, this only works in a square matrix. If it's not square matrix, this may not work. Okay. So, now the next part is how do you, we're going to check for equal now? Right? Check for equality. So um, I'm not going to do the, the summation. You can do that. Um, you know, do that. But I'll just use the function built into the Python language. So it's like if the sum of the diagonal one, it's going to add it up for you, is equal to the sum of the diagonal two, then we say um, yes, otherwise no. Right? So. Again, if you check this, it should say yes, because we did check that they are indeed equal. Okay, so there we go. So if you are curious, so once you get that working, you know that it's, it's working, then you can go back and turn on your uh, randomized numbers. So we don't use this, I'll leave, I'll, I'll, I'll turn that off. So now we're using random numbers, okay? So let's see if it's actually correct or not. So here we go. No, because if you add them up, they're not equal. And we get no, no. So you have to keep trying until you get one. I don't know if it's going to hit one or not, but it might hit. Okay. Because it's randomized every time. So if you get lucky, you're going to hit one that says yes. Um, I don't have one. It should work, okay? Because we did test it, it actually works. So it's, it's much harder that way. What if you just reduced it by two to a two? Okay. So two by two. It's much smaller. So actually you can see it's better, right? You can see that they're equal indeed. If it's um this is not equal, right? They're not equal. And then it's not equal. Not equal, not equal. Oh come on. But we have another equal, right? So it does prove that it you know, actually um our code is actually working. All right, so I'll stop here and also share the code just in case if you're interested in, in you know exploring some more. Um, again, thanks for the questions. If you have any questions further, please do let me know. Thanks, and I'll see you again.